Hi everyone, our subject in this video is matrices, specifically calculating the inverse of a large matrix bigger than say 2x2 two two or 3x3. Three three. In the example we're going to be looking at, we'll be able to calculate its inverse in just a few steps by carefully choosing the method. Let's discover the maths. In mathematics, as well as knowing how to perform a task, it's important to choose a method that's effective and appropriate, for example in terms of efficiency. In the case of matrices and systems of linear equations, there are various alternatives for carrying out certain tasks, some of which involve determinants and some of which don't. The problem with determinants is that their calculation involves a lot of operations. So if we use them, the computational cost can be enormous. To appreciate this, let's look at a simple example. We're going to calculate the inverse of the 5 by 5 matrix A uh, shown here. Suppose we decide to do it using determinants. The inverse of a matrix is equal to the transpose of its adjoint matrix divided by the determinant. As you know, a matrix is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero. In our case, it's an upper triangular matrix and the determinant is the product of the elements of the diagonal. This product is minus one, which is different from non-zero. So A is an invertible matrix. If we calculated this inverse matrix by the formula mentioned above, we'd have to calculate the adjoint matrix, that is the adjoints of each of the elements of the matrix, a total of 25. All the calculations are simple, but there are 25 determinants. And at any point, we might make a mistake. Why not try it yourself? and tell us your impressions in the comments below. However, here we're going to use the Gauss-Jordan method to find the inverse, because this makes the calculation quicker and easier. To obtain the inverse of our matrix, we write the matrix by blocks. In the first block, we write our matrix A, and in the second block, we write the identity matrix. In this case, since our matrix is a 5 by 5 matrix, the identity matrix is also 5 by 5. Through elementary operations on the rows of this matrix, our objective will be to obtain the identity matrix in the first block. If this is possible, then the matrix we obtain in the second block will be the inverse matrix of A. If it's impossible, then this would show that A is not invertible and so has no inverse. Notice that in our case the task is simple. All the elements outside the diagonal of the matrix are zero except this one. So we have to make zero on this element. And we do this by adding the fourth row to the third. Then we obtain a new matrix. We copy the first row, second row, and fifth, because they won't make zeros. We also copy the fourth row, because it's the one that will make zeros. And instead of the third row, we put the sum of the fourth row plus the third. Reading the add ends from bottom to top, zero plus zero is zero, zero plus zero is zero, zero plus minus one is minus one, one plus minus one is zero, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 0 is 0. Notice that in the first block we already have a diagonal matrix and to have the identity matrix only this minus 1 of the third row fails. So now we multiply the third row by minus 1 copy the rest of the rows 
and multiply the third row by minus 1. So we have minus 1 times 0 is 0, minus 1 times 0 is 0, minus 1 times minus 1 is 1, minus 1 times 0 is 0, 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 minus 1 times 1, minus 1, minus 1 times 1 is minus 1, and minus 1 times 0 is 0. As in the first block, we have the identity matrix. Matrix A is invertible, and its inverse is the matrix that appears in the second block. We have that A to the minus 1 is this matrix. And notice that it's the matrix A itself. Some of you may be thinking this has been a pointless exercise because at school or university they only ask you to calculate inverses of 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrices and it's easier to do that with determinants. Well, the fact is 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 matrices aren't much use in the real world. For real world problems, computers have to calculate much bigger inverses of 10 by 10, 100 by 100, 1000 by 1000 or even larger matrices. And for systems of hundreds or thousands of equations, Kramer's method is not a good choice. For big matrix problems, avoid methods that use determinants. Alternatives such as Gauss-Jordan or LU factorization are more appropriate. You'll find that the various computer software systems don't use methods that involve determinants because they're too slow or even impossible to carry out. Let's be clear, we're not saying that determinants should never be used. Determinants are an excellent tool and in some cases they work well. What we're saying is that in mathematics it's important always to carefully assess which method to use to carry out a particular task. We need to know not only how to do it, but also be able to choose the procedure that will work best in practice. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, as always, you can leave any comments you have below. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.